imagine it's your wedding day. You picked the perfect venue. You posed for a million pictures. And you built up the courage to walk down the aisle to say, I do. But what happens when an uninvited guest shows up to crash your big day? To the untrained eye, the ground in front of me looks like soft grass and sandy soil. But just beneath the surface, a world of terror is waiting to erupt. Do you know what love really means? Look out, volcanoes everywhere. The red imported fire ant was accidentally introduced to the United States from South America in the early 1930s, and since this time has become a major agricultural and urban pest throughout the southeastern U.S. These insects have established a stronghold, so eradication is virtually impossible, and every year thousands of people fall victim to their agonizing venomous stings. At a first glance, their mounds look completely benign. Yet beneath the surface is a catacomb of elaborate tunnels, bustling with workers, soldiers, the queen, and her brood of precious eggs. The moment an invader is detected, like a volcano it erupts, and the merciless flow of angry ants will destroy anything in their path. Now, the purpose of today's episode, aside from the sheer entertainment of me being stung by gazillions of fire ants, is to educate you about these invasive little insects and to show you what to do if you ever find yourself in this worst case scenario. Now, it's no secret that I've been stung by fire ants in the past. In fact, I've been stung close to 300 times as I plunged my hands down into one of their mounds. Truth be told, it's one of the worst stink scenarios of my entire life. But realistically, you're not likely to be stung on your hands. You're much more likely to be stung on your feet. So today, I'm going to sacrifice mine in the name of science to show you what to do if you ever find yourself in this worst case scenario. So if you're ready to party, let's dance with the fire ants. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to be scorched by fire ants. Here we go. One, two, oh boy. Three. Now, before we enter the volcano and provoke an eruption of swarming ants, I want you to understand what makes these little invaders so impactful. Size doesn't always matter, and what these ants lack in scale, they make up for with sheer volume. Even the slightest disruption will provoke fire ants to attack a perceived intruder with a full barrage of soldiers. And if the mound is big enough, we are literally talking about thousands of ants. With their mandibles, they bite and lock on. From there, the sting party begins as they twist their abdomen into striking position and inflict sting after sting after sting. Fire ants inject a neurotoxic venom that immediately makes their victim feel as if they have stepped into a pool of boiling lava. Sounds like fun. Now let's see what that looks like in real life. The mental preparation that it takes to induce a sting, let alone an onslaught of stings, is not an easy thing to describe. This isn't like taking a single bullet ant sting or an execution wasp, which are both incredibly painful. This is getting stung over and over again by fire ants, one of the most formidable little biological landmines that exists, in my opinion, on the entire planet. So if you guys are ready, it's time to step into a mound of fire ants. Here we go. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to be scorched by fire ants. Here they come, here they come, here they come. Oh boy, oh, I'm just gonna let myself get covered. Oh, and the volcano is erupting. Oh, ah, ah. oh man, they are really swarming at this point. Look at that, they're completely covering my ankles. Oh, ah. I do not miss the feeling of fire ants. Ah. Okay, I, I, I gotta step out. I gotta step out of the mound, out of the mound. Ah! Mm. ah, man, they got that one foot a lot worse than this foot. 
They might be small, but fire ants are incredibly mighty and they attack in mass. So right now what they're doing is biting out with the mandibles and inflicting that sting and that neurotoxin venom is just destroying my feet and my ankles right now. Oh, this is the absolute worst case scenario you would not want to find yourself in. Imagine being in flip-flops, you brush through an entire mound of ants and your feet are completely covered. I can already see the stings beginning to welt up. All right guys, I gotta dust them off. I gotta dust off, we good? We good? Okay, I'm gonna use this feather duster to gently get the ants off of me. Yes, I don't wanna to try to crush any ants in this process, so I'm just gonna lightly oh, dust them off. Come on guys, get off of me. Off, 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 off. Off we go. Oh my goodness. Sweet feather duster relief. Oh my gosh. Oh, and there's a bunch of them in between my toes. You wanna to talk about sensitive skin areas? In between the toes has gotta to be the worst. Ah. Ah, okay, ants are off. I'm out of the scene. Now, I know you are probably all wondering to yourselves, Coyote, just how bad are you feeling at this moment? Both of my feet are in absolute agony. And the burning at this point has started to wear off and the itching is beginning to set in. I would guess that I took somewhere around 450 to 500 stings. That is more than I took last time when I plunged my hands into the mound of fire ants. My toes seem to have even changed slight color given the onslaught of stings that I took in between my toes, which is an incredibly sensitive area. The top of your feet are soft and those ants just went to town. Now, the first thing you wanna do if you find yourself in a mound is obviously to get out of it. Get the ants off of you and move yourself into a controlled situation. If you can, get yourself some water and wash off the sting zone. So what I'm gonna do is just take my Brave Wilderness water bottle and get all of the dirt and dust and any other debris on my feet off, and this is just gonna be so incredibly soothing. Oh yeah, ice cold water. That feels wonderful. Ah, wow. I never thought I'd be so happy to have cold water on my feet. Getting the sting zone washed off is definitely important. Just kind of bat it down if you can with a little paper towel there and get it dry before you go on to apply the rest of your first aid. Now, you're very unlikely to have an allergic reaction to fire ants. However, they have been reported to have caused anaphylactic shock in the past. So stay in tune with how your body is reacting to the venom. If you feel your throat tightening up or you're just really losing control of the situation, seek medical help. But for the most part, fire ant stings are nothing more than just simply an uncomfortable scenario. Well, here we are. I'm sitting in a chair with two weird cones on my legs and no shoes. You guys know what we're getting into today. People often ask, Coyote, where did the origin of your bite and sting <coughs> climb begin? <coughs> Truth be told, right here at this very harvester ant mound. Ah, that was one on my neck. Now the harvester ant specifically has one of the most potent venoms in the entire insect kingdom. These little creatures inspired me to climb up Justin Schmidt's Insect Sting Pain Index. Ah! I climbed the ah! index in my ah! own way, but it began with this insect. You may also be noticing these weird contraptions on my legs. Those are called ant blockers and will help us keep the ants contained to my legs and my feet. The last time we did this, they covered my body and I got stings in all sorts of places that you wouldn't necessarily want to show on camera. Jeez. Now when it comes to ants, what we ultimately learned in our first episode is that they do ah. bite and they ah. do sting. All the ah. pain comes from the venom that is in that sting. Ah. You guys know what's gonna happen, right? I'm gonna remove my feet off of this little stool and I'm gonna try to withstand 60 seconds worth of bites and stings to show you guys exactly why you want to avoid harvester ants if you ever come across them in the wild or even right in your own backyard. So if you guys are ready, it is time to revisit the origin of stings by standing in a mound of harvester ants. 
I don't want to step on anybody going in here. Okay, now when it comes to aggravating ants, I won't have to do much. All I'll need to do is stand around the opening and the second one of them stings, they release a sting pheromone, which tells the rest of them it's time to attack. Now we're gonna start the timer from the second I start to get stung. Right now the ants are just beginning to investigate the fact that I am standing above their home and this entire colony spreads out in this entire area where you see no plants actually growing. The mound, the catacomb beneath the surface is massive. I can see the ants are starting to investigate me. No stings yet. They're just like, okay, oh, okay, there's one sting right there on the inside of my foot. Now, ah, another sting on the back of the foot there. Yep, okay, so once that sting pheromone begins to tell the ants that an invader is here, more stings will come. And you can see at this point, there are more and more ants beginning to surround my feet. Ah! Ugh, I'm getting right in between my toes right now. Ah! Now, I haven't been moving my feet around very much, just keeping them in one spot. If an animal were to stumble upon a nest, or you, ah! Gah, one right in between my pinky toe and my, next to my pinky toe. Ah, man, that is a very sensitive spot. So, they will tell each other, hey, We've got something out here that's not going away. Usually once an animal, like a skunk or a coyote, gets stung on its nose once or twice, they're like, okay, this is not a situation for me to mess with. But in this instance, ah, I just keep enduring. Oh, geez, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, oh, it's getting worse and worse as they begin to swarm more and more so. But you can see they're not all over the tops of my feet. They're actually going under my feet, strangely enough. Wow, you guys just are making an encampment under my feet. Look at this. When I move my feet, Boom, ants everywhere. Now, if my feet were horn lizards, which are notorious for coming in and feasting on these little insects, this is exactly what would happen. The ants would swarm out and try to take out that reptile. But fortunately for the horn lizard, their skin is so thick and rugged, the ants are not capable of stinging through it. So the horn lizard will just sit there, like you see with my feet, and lap up ant after ant after ant. Ah, oh, this is getting rather unbearable at this point. And the stings don't come in as much of a wave as the fire ants do. And that's the big difference between the fire ants and the harvester ants. The fire ants are just like a tidal wave of stings. The harvester ants are a bit more calculated. They're exploring my feet, they're finding the soft spots, and then they're moving in to bite and inflict that sting. Oh man, it is so uncomfortable to have them in between my toes. Oh buddies, come on, you can make it a little bit longer. The first time I did this, it was such a shock to my body and my system. Running around, ants all over my body. At this point, I've been in the mound for several minutes, taking sting after sting after sting. And my body, while it's uncomfortable, definitely not as uncomfortable as it was the first time around. I wish I had the skin of a horn lizard at the moment. Oh! Ah! I yield, I yield, I yield. <laughs> out, of the, out of the harvester ants. Okay, now that I've endured, a second go with the harvester ants, we're gonna go visit my good friend and inspiration, entomologist Justin Schmidt, the godfather of the insect sting pain index, and get his reaction to today's ultimate chaos. Several weeks ago when I placed my arm inside of a box of angry yellow jackets, I said to myself, this is ridiculous. I'm not getting stung by anything else. Yeah, here we are two weeks later, and I just put my feet into a nest of harvester ants, which are species you oftentimes see right here in your own backyard. Now, what's your experience been thus far with harvester ants? They hurt. Yeah. And they, they're kind of sneaky because often they'll get on your feet and you don't know it. And it's just when they get underneath, like typically I wear sandals. Mm -hmm. When they get between the sandal and my foot, then you're in trouble. Mm. And, and they don't hurt like a, a yellow jacket or honeybees, like wham, you feel it right away. These kind of sneak up on you. But then they also have this, what I call an unesthetic pain. It's not anything you can put your fingers on, but you don't like it. Yeah, yeah that's it, a great, you're like, what's happening to me right now? And, and it can kind of creep up. Like it'll get the lymph nodes. I've had them sting my feet. Mm -hmm. And they, you have a lymph node up in your groin area and that starts swelling up and that feels really bad. Yeah. You don't like that. Again, it's not a sharp pain, it's not a piercing pain, but you don't like that. And the interesting thing about these ants is they use them in puberty rites in California 
back in the 1800s before the Indians were all moved out and they used them and they would eat eagle feathers with 100 or 200 ants on them. Like what, dipping eagle feathers into ants and then eating that? Yeah, and they, they would get stung in their throat and their stomach and all. And the good thing is they don't tend to swell, but then these kids would go into this sort of hallucination like, ah, 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 and the great spirit would come down and guide them through their life of, don't eat ants, you know, I, <laughs> something like that. I, I have to note that on that whole hallucination element, like I can imagine them going into your body and you getting stung would be a whole lot worse than on your feet, but for a solid 45 minutes after taking the stings. And I guess I kind of went through this last time because I've done harvester ants on my hands and experienced mild swelling. Um, same thing with my feet, but man, I felt like I was under the influence of alcohol or narcotic for a solid 45 minutes after I had taken all the stings. Like I was almost delirious at one point and not so much in the pain, but just like my body being super out of it. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the, the Native Americans, obviously felt the same way. Mm -hmm. They used the same kind of ants, Pagana miramax californicus, which we have Maricopa. Mm -hmm. Maricopa's in Arizona, yep. California, California. But they're basically the same thing. And, and they obviously have the same effect because these poor kids would go out in the fall this time of year and they'd get, get all these ants that they were eating. And then they'd go out until the great spirit gave them a guidance for life and then they were allowed to come back in and join the manhood. Hmm. Well, when it comes to the great spirit giving me guidance in life, I don't know if it's guiding me in the direction of taking no more stings, but I will say at this point, I'm no longer experiencing pain, so it makes it a lot better than the yellow jacket box. And the good thing about harvester ants is that unlike fire ants, the stings don't swell up into unsightly white pustules. So when it comes to the harvester ant experience, far easier to maintain than fire ants. Justin, thank you so much for taking all this time to visit with us today. The inspiration that you've brought to myself and everybody else out there who loves insects and arachnids is staggering. We could not do this without you. And if you guys have not checked out Justin's book, I highly recommend it. It is a fascinating read, but do not follow the insect sting pain index like you've seen me doing. You don't want all of that pain that comes with the bites and stings. So thank you guys for watching. Justin, thank you for continuing to be a Yoda in my quest to find out what's the next most painful sting. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Justin Schmidt. Be brave. And be wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. The Southwestern United States has a reputation of being rough and rugged. It's cowboy country, and in many people's minds, it is laced with dangerous reptiles and dream-haunting arachnids. When it comes to Arizona's Sonoran Desert, a fair share of this lore is true. There are venomous animals and some pretty big spiders. It never becomes any less nerve-wracking to pick up a tarantula. I promise you that. But trust me when I say they are much more afraid of you than you should ever be of them. Insects, on the other hand, are another story. And living in many Arizona backyards is a fearless creature armed with one of the most toxic venoms in the world. And while they are no bigger than the tip of your finger, they are absolutely fearless when it comes to attacking an intruder. Okay, so right now, I am tucking my pant legs into my boots because what I am standing in is the attack zone of the harvester ant. Now there are many species of ants that live out here in the Sonoran Desert, but nothing is more aggressive than the harvester ant. All ants have the ability to bite, but what most people don't realize is that many species, including the harvester ant, also have the ability to sting. And boy, is it a whopper. What I'm gonna try to do is see if I can get harvester ants on my hands and let them bite and sting me for 60 seconds. If you guys want me to be stung by the bullet ant someday, I think you have to walk before you can run. So I think the harvester ant is a great test to see how I will fend against the bullet ant. All right, you ready? Now before I go through with this, let's talk about the toxicity of the harvester ant. A single sting is said to be almost 20 times as potent as a honeybee. Personally, I'm not allergic to any bees, wasps, or hornets. Still, this is incredibly dangerous, so I stress, never, and I mean never, attempt what you are about to see in this episode. 
basically just gonna put my hands down right here in front of their burrow and let them hop on. When harvester ants attack, they use their powerful mandibles to bite and hold on to their victim. Ah, yep, getting stung already. While repetitively ah. stinging and injecting ah. venom through the stinger at the base of their abdomen. Oh, that burns. The venom is laced with an alkaloid poison, which when released, ah. acts as an alarm pheromone that causes other ants in the area to attack. Ah. Ah. Ah, they're all over my hands now, look at that. This was very obvious, as after the first sting was inflicted, it seemed as if the entire colony was called to the front lines. Oh boy. Ah. 60 seconds seemed like a lifetime. Ah. As tiny stingers jabbed me over and over, I could feel them getting into my clothes, up my back, and onto my neck. Ah, that was one on my neck. Mario, get the one off my neck. And eventually, the pain became too much. All right, I think it's 60 seconds. Ah. Ah. I was done. The ants had won. Ah. I gotta take my shirt off. So why in the world did I do this? Well, many of you out there watching have requested that I be stung by a bullet ant which can inflict a single sting that is considered to be one of the most painful stings in the animal kingdom. <sighs> ah, still one in my pants. Ah! Oh, this is truly the meaning of ants in your pants. <sighs> the producers and I wanted to see how my body would react to several stings from the harvester ant. When it was all said and done, the crew and I counted 63 sting zones, and the effects of the venom lasted for nearly a week which included searing pain during the first couple hours, followed by swelling, tenderness, and periodic itching. My arms, my hands, the back of my head are absolutely on fire right now. Wow, the harvester ant is one formidable little foe. I can tell you that much. If I could sustain this, maybe, just maybe, the bullet ant challenge isn't too far off. You gotta get a shot, man. Come on over. Uh, I know it hurts. I think half hour from now, if I'm okay, there's a good chance that I'm gonna be able to get up close, possibly stung by the bullet ant. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild, stay away from harvester ants. I'll see you on the next adventure. I'm sure you're shaking your head right now thinking, Coyote, you are absolutely crazy. And maybe I am, but I hope that we have all learned something from this little experiment. One, the ants both bite and sting. And two, never, I mean never, tangle with a colony of harvester ants. There's no question about it. The Wild West is rough and rugged. And whether you're talking about the rocky terrain, laced with spine-covered plants, or its animals, most of which are armed with fangs and stingers, Arizona's Sonoran Desert is an adventure lover's playground. Sure, we all have our fears of being bitten by a rattlesnake when venturing off trail. Or in my case, having a giant desert centipede run on my pant leg. But in actuality, the good news is that each and every one of these creatures does its best to avoid human interaction. However, sometimes you have an accidental run-in, and when you do, a bite or a sting can be incredibly painful. <sighs> yeah, he got me. He bit me. For sure. Yeah, he definitely bit me. When it comes to my line of work, the goal is to have an interaction so that I can show you the effects of these encounters. This way we can all learn why it's important to be in tune with our surroundings and why it's always best to admire animals from a safe distance. Velvet in, velvet in. Got one? Yeah, yeah, he's right there on the edge of that log. I get my back off. Yes, hold on, no, he's underneath the log. I just started to tip it, I started, ran back. Hold on a second. Oh, I saw him. Did you see it? He ducked out, ducked back in. There it is, there it is. Get him, get him, Bill. Ah! Yes! Yes! Look at that! Whoa! <laughs> oh, he almost got into the crevice of that log. Wow, that is a good sized one, too. Uh, but we got our velvet ant. There it is. Okay, cool. Well, tomorrow morning. I'm gonna get stung by that little ornery bugger. Cool. The velvet ant, which is actually a species of ground wasp, 
and not an ant at all, claims a famous nickname, the cow killer. Ranked on the insect sting pain index as being the fourth most painful sting in the insect kingdom, rumor has it that the pain is so intense it can kill a cow. You may be looking at this thinking to yourself, Coyote, are you gonna get stung? Yeah, I am. I'm gonna get stung by this today. Now the insect sting pain index says that the intense pain will last for about 30 minutes. Uh, and the reason that I'm doing it is to work my way up to the bullet ant. You wanna see me stung by the bullet ant? Kinda feel like I have to get stung by everything else leading up to that. I am not looking forward to 30 minutes of pain that's gonna come from this insect. I know, right? Here we go again. Coyote is about to enter the strike zone, but this one's a little different. When it comes to alligator bites, crab pinches, or blood-sucking leeches, I'm fine with that. When it comes to stingers and venom, that's where even I get nervous. Now, the females do not have wings. The males do have wings, but what's interesting is that the males do not have stingers. Guess who does have a stinger? That's right, the females, and that's what we have here today. Now, one of the most impressive things about this insect is the size of its stinger. In fact, it's about as long as the entire length of the abdomen. What I wanna do now is use these little entomology forceps to pick the velvet ant up and show you guys just how big that stinger is. You ready for this? Yeah, are they delicate? Um, they are not. The velvet ant actually has a very, very durable exoskeleton, one of the toughest exoskeletons in the insect kingdom. So me picking her up with the forceps is not going to cause her any sort of pain or damage. Come on. Oh, oh. oh. Oh, getting away, getting away. I got it, I got it. Got it? Got it. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Now they can be found in the grass. So if you're out there walking around barefoot and you step on one of these, you're not gonna squish it. What's gonna happen is it's gonna spin around and then it's gonna tuck its abdomen under and boom, you're gonna get nailed with that giant stinger. Well, I think at this juncture, it is time for me to actually take a sting. Are you guys getting nervous? I'll tell you what, I sure was. Now, they say that this sting is painful enough to kill a cow. However, there are no reported cases of cows, or humans for that matter, ever dying from a velvet ant sting. This makes me feel a bit better, but you never know how your body will react to venom, so we always have an epinephrine pen on location, just in case I have an allergic reaction to the sting. All right, Mark's signaling me that it is time. Here we go. I'm about to be stung by the velvet ant. Here we go. All right, Coyote. Well, it's about that time. Yeah. How are we going to pull this off? I see we have a, you know, camera-wise, we have a GoPro, small camera right next to me. Oh, hey, there's Chance. Chance over there. What's the game plan for this sting in here? What's, what's the idea? Well, this is going to go down one of two ways. What I'm going to try first is to actually take this little glass, flip it upside down, get the ant to this end, and then place it down on top of my arm. This will isolate the ant on my skin and I'm hoping that as it tries to get away, it's just going to sting me. Now, if that doesn't work, I also have my pair of entomology forceps and I'm actually going to pick up, hold the ant, place it on my arm and let it sting me. One way or another, I am definitely going to be stung by the velvet ant. <sighs> Here we go, okay. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is get the ant up into that part of the glass and I'm going to spin this over onto my forearm and with any luck the ant is going to sting me. Here we go, ready? Let's do it, here comes number four. I'm Coyote Peterson and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the velvet ant. One, two, here we go, three. Oh boy, oh my heart's racing right now. Oh boy, I can see its abdomen kind of pumping. My heart is going now. Any second it could happen. Yeah, any second it could sting me. Oh boy, ooh, 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 ow, 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 it's biting at my skin. It's biting at the edge of the container, trying to get out. Ooh. Oh, and that stinger is gonna be like a little hypodermic needle going into my skin. This is intense. 
the uh, glass is actually starting to get a little foggy from the heat of my skin. So at this point, I think we're going to move to plan B, which is holding the velvet ant with the entomology forceps. I don't think it's going to sting me at this point. It's been in there for about two minutes, and so far no sting. It's just trying to get out. So I'm gonna flip my arm upside down and get the ant back under control. Okay, here we go, ready? Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, How do you feel? Uh, extremely nervous and my heart is racing. I actually think I do have to take a second just to get my heart rate to calm back down. Okay, cutting GoPro. Okay. All right, the only way to actually move forward with this is for me to hold the ant with the entomology forceps up against my skin and let it sting me. Dude, this seems, this is gonna do it, isn't it? Yeah, hold on, I need a second. My heart's like, right. ooh, getting dizzy. Yeah, getting dizzy. In the world of entomology, when it comes to milking the venom of insects and arachnids, holding them with forceps is a guaranteed way to induce a sting. So I think we all know what's going to happen next. This is crazy, guys, this is crazy. Uh, my nerves are going this much for the velvet ant. I can't imagine what the uh, tarantula hawk and the bullet ant are gonna be like. Okay. I can't, I can't believe you're about to do this. That stinger is enormous. Yeah, yeah, okay, you can do this, you can do this, okay. So is that stinger gonna go all the way under your skin? Yeah, it's gonna go right into my skin. Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Here you go, ready? All right, let's do this again one more time for good measure. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the sting zone with the cow killer. Are you ready? Are you ready? No, I'm never ready. One, two, three. You good? Yeah. Get your shot. I'm gonna place it right down on my arm. Here we go. My arm shaking. And go. Ah! <laughs> okay, let me get back here. You're right. What are you feeling? Oh wow, oh wow, okay. G give me a second. Oh my gosh. You all right? Oh yeah. What are you feeling? What does it feel like? Give me a second, give me a second. Oh my gosh, guys, this is super bad. Move this other way. Hold on, I gotta, gotta try to control my heart rate. Try to get a tight shot right there where the stinger when you just see there's blood. Okay, try to get a shot because I can get a like walk around for a second. Right there. Right there, it's our stomach. It's our stomach. I could feel it. It was like um, you could feel it go all the way under the skin, all the way in. I could feel it insert into my arm. You gonna be alright? Okay. Now they say that the sting of the velvet ant will last for about 30 minutes. And I can tell you guys right now, this is the worst sting I've ever taken. There's no question about it. It's worse than a horror street ant, it is worse than a fire ant. It feels like I'm getting stung over and over again. You can see the welt starting to form on my arm. Oh, oh man, yeah, there's a welt big time. Describe the pain. Is it, is it like a pulsating pain, a stabbing The pain, pain, it's radiating. It is radiating. It feels like, um, you know if you get a charley horse in your muscle and it like seizes up and then it's like, doof, doof. Oh, that is powerful. I can see why they call them cow killers. Uh, <laughs> oh, that is some intense pain right there. How long has it been? About, about seven minutes. Seven minutes. Uh, they say this, the pain from this lasts for about 30. Uh, about 23 minutes to go, guys. 23 minutes to go. Ah!
Now aside from working my way up to the bullet ant, the reason I was willing to take a sting from this insect was so that we could all see the effects of the venom. 25 minutes has gone by, ah, my arm is still on fire, and what's crazy is that, look at all the red blotching that's formed around the sting. There's the stinger insertion point right there, and it is swollen, and it is very tender, and you can see how red the entire radius is of the sting. I'm sweating. <sighs> My goal was to do the best I could to describe the pain I was feeling. And it, it still hurts. It definitely still hurts, but not as bad as the initial uh, impact of the stinger. But what's interesting is that all around the sting is tingling, like these little tiny pincushion needles going tss, 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 tss. And as you can see, there's all these little red dots forming, and I'm assuming that is where the venom is spreading into my arm. Oh wow, well I would say that this was definitely one very intense sting. The cow killer has earned its reputation as being one of the most powerful stings in the insect kingdom. <laughs> And while it may be ranked as a four on the insect sting pain index, for me, at this point, it's definitely number one. I'd say I'm one step closer to being stung by the bullet ant, but first, I'm gonna have to go up against the tarantula hawk. I have a feeling that that one is going to be bad. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Woo, let's get out of the desert. Hidden within the darkness of the Costa Rican rainforest, a legend exists beneath the ancient canopy. Indigenous people refer to it as bala, which means bullet. It is rumored that just a single sting from this animal is so excruciating that it feels as if one has been shot with a gun. They say this creature is not only to be avoided, but feared by all who hear its name. Bala. Over the course of the past year, I have taken on the challenge of being stung by some of the planet's most notorious insects. It all began with harvester ants, a common species in the southwestern United States that hails as having the most toxic insect venom in the world. I took around 60 stings ah. and walked away, ah. mostly unscathed. Ah, they're all over my hands now, look at that. Ah. Ah. That was one on my neck. Next, I buried my hands into a nest of fire ants. The pain was like sticking your hands into a burning ring of fire. Ow, 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 oh! The aftermath, one of my biggest regrets, as my hands were swollen for a month and permanently scarred even to this day. One would think I had gone far enough, and then we came upon the velvet ant. Famous for having the longest stinger in the world, it sent me into agonizing pain for nearly 30 minutes. Okay, let me get back here. You alright? What are you feeling? Oh wow! My next challenge was the tarantula hawk, which is ranked as the second most painful sting in the insect kingdom. Here we go. so intense that it put me on the ground with my arm in a state of paralysis for nearly five minutes. John, I can't move my arm! I was ascending the sting pain index and I could see the peak of the mountain. It looked down at me with black beady eyes, an alien looking creature amongst all other animals, and a name that cast fear into the hearts of men. But before I could go flesh to stinger, first, we needed to find a bullet ain't. Today is Bullet Ant Challenge Day. I'm actually pretty excited about this. As long as we can find a bullet ant, I'm gonna get stung by one. So guys, keep your eyes peeled. These little ants can be anywhere. Well, I guess they aren't really little. They're probably about this big. So 
Let's head down here into the rainforest and see if we can find one. All right. Believe it or not, bullet ants are incredibly common on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica. And setting the stage for a sting was only going to take a single one. It seems simple. However, finding them can be quite the challenge, especially when dealing with some of the most difficult filming conditions we have ever faced. Oh boy, that is the disorienting thing about the rainforest. Everything looks the same, no matter what direction you turn. Mario! Daddy! Yeah, all right. Okay, found him. Ha! Got nervous there for a second. Right, let's keep going. For days we scoured the jungle, traversed rushing rivers, fought torrential rainfall, and sloshed through what seemed like an endless maze of mud. The goal was to find a creature no longer than a needle and a haystack that literally spanned thousands of acres. It seemed as if all was lost. And finally, after several days of searching, the sun came out and fate took its course. I just saw an ant up on the tree here. Come up really slow, this might be a nest. You think you got an S? I mean, the ground looks the same as it has in most of the jungle, but there's a hole here. I definitely saw a large ant moving up on the side of that, but before I just storm up there. Did you just see one or do you see I a saw few? One ant, one ant. But this looks like there's a hole right there. Where? You see that? This looks like it could be a nest. I don't see the hole. Can you point to it? Oh, I just saw There's, there's one coming out right there. Coming out. There we go. Yeah. Oh, it's going right towards my hand. That is a bullet ant right there. Hold on, I'm just gonna put it in the container. Ah! Oh! Mark, watch out. Watch out. I think there's. They going on me? I think so, man. I think they're swarming. We have definitely found a bullet ant nest. There's no question about it. Um, I was in there trying to get a single ant and they started swarming out. Okay, this just went from slightly dangerous to extremely dangerous because there was one crawled up on my hand and I got startled and I flicked it off of me. I need to go back and get the container. We need to get an ant. All right, come on, get out of the stick. Got one. My hand is shaking, I got one. Nope, it came off. I got one, I got one. Back up, back up, back up. It's going right towards my hand. Oh boy. It's attacking the tip of the stick. I'm gonna put it down right here on the dirt. Yeah! Okay. All right, I'm gonna get it in this cup. Got it! Walked right in. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Holy yeah. cow! Oh my gosh! Hold on, wait, check your legs, check your legs. See anything, Mario? Oh. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good oh my gosh. Woo. <laughs> If I was that nervous just to catch the ant, I can't imagine how nervous I'm going to be to actually be stung by it. Oh, this is wild. All right, let's take the ant down here into a flatter area, get the scene under control. It's time to go through with the bullet ant challenge. Let's do it. Woo! Yes! Got our ant! Guys, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We have caught a bullet ant and we have it in the glass capsule and right now Mark is filming the final macro shots and I am two, yes, two minutes away from being stung by the insect that supposedly has the most painful sting in the insect kingdom. Actually seeing the bullet ant face to face, coyote pack, it is unbelievably intimidating. I have a feeling that it is going to be unbelievably painful, but I am ready. Oh, this is it. We are here. This is Costa Rica. And that, ladies and gentlemen, dare I say it, is one monster-sized bullet ant.
All right, before we get into this, let's just go over some basic safety. For everybody out there watching, we have taken all the proper medical precautions. What we have right here is an epinephrine pen in case my body reacts negatively to the venom. Now, I will note that there are no reported cases of humans dying from the sting of a bullet ant. All right, Coyote, so what's the game plan? What are you thinking here? How are we gonna get you stung by the bullet ant? Yeah, how are we gonna get me stung by the bullet ant? I love that question mark, I appreciate that. Um, okay, well this one is very similar to the velvet ant. This is gonna go down one of two ways. The first thing that we're gonna try is I'm gonna lift up the glass capsule and then we're gonna place it there. If it doesn't sting me like that, then I will use the forceps where I will pick it up by its thorax and just like the tarantula hawk, induce a sting. One way or another, there is no question about it, ladies and gentlemen, today, I'm going to be stung by a bullet ant. All right, it's time. GoPro rolling. We are rolling. All right, now what I'm gonna do is tip up the glass capsule and then place the ant down onto my forearm. Here we go. Mark, your shot good? Are you sure about this? Yep, no turning back now. Mario, ready? Ready. Let's do it. Here we go. Ant on my skin. One, two, this is it. No turning back. Three. Ant is on my forearm. Look at that. Okay, it's just trying to climb out of the glass. I don't know if it's realized that it's actually on my arm. It is looking a little bit agitated. I can feel the little legs grabbing onto my skin. And right now it is just trying to get out of the capsule. It's thinking, okay, something's new. It can probably sense the heat of my skin and also the smell of my skin. These ants can pick up different pheromones. We'll let it go a few seconds longer. And I think similar to the velvet ant, that this ant is gonna need to be held with forceps to induce a sting. Okay, I'm going to tip the glass capsule back up and get the ant under control. Are you ready? Yep. One. Two, control. Here we go. Woohoo! Oh man. Ugh. You alright? I cut the GoPro. I'm just going through your head right now. What was that like? I'm lightheaded. I'm lightheaded. Oh, the nerves that that takes, guys. When the ants were coming out of the nest, they were very, very angry. And I think at this point, the ant has calmed down and it's just thinking, can I get out of this glass capsule? And I was not bitten, I was not stung. So what I'm gonna do now is use the forceps to pick up the ant, place it onto my forearm, and I'm going to take a sting. Here we go, are you ready? I'm ready. GoPro is rolling. Okay, I am literally at the summit of the insect sting pain index. So what I'm gonna do now is remove the glass. Whew. Ant is live, okay. It is out and active. I am going to now pick it up with the forceps. Got it. Whew. There we go. That right there is a perfect hold right on the thorax. And wow, look at that. The stinger is already flying. Uh, does that give you enough space there, Mark, to be able to see the stinger as it goes into my arm? Yes, sir. We've got clear visibility on the abdomen. Here we go. I'm going to move the little wooden base out of the way. Glass capsule is right here in frame. Forearm on the table. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to take on the Bullet Ant Challenge. Are you ready? Let's do it. One. Two. Oh my gosh, this is it. Three. Ah! Ah! Oh, it's stuck in my arm! It's stuck in my arm! Ah! Ah! The stinger is stuck in my arm, look at that! Ah! Okay, it's off, it's off, it's off! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh! You're right. Oh my god, it is really bad! Oh my gosh, I think it has the trench lock topped. You're right, man. Yep. Oh, did you see that? The stinger was stuck into my forearm, right into the vein. There is the sting insertion point right there. Oh my gosh. 
It is like, oh, it's hot. Oh, I can feel the venom already right in my forearm. Ah. Oh, it is, it's number one. Ah. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's burning more. It's getting worse. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh, my whole arm is getting really tight. Ah. Ah. Oh my gosh, Mark, put your arm out here. Just tell them. Feel my forearm. Wow. Dude, it is like rock hard. I think it's spasming up the muscle. Now, the toxin that comes out of the sting of a bullet ant is a Panera toxin, which can cause you to hallucinate. So, I don't know how much venom actually went into my arm. All I know is that the stinger was in my forearm for a considerable amount of time. Ah, uh, oh my gosh. Oh, 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 dude, I think my, I think my, I think my neck is having a muscle spasm too. My whole muscle structure is like pounded right now. Ah, uh, what is that? Okay. That's not good, let's keep an eye on that. My neck is like stiffening up. My entire arm feels like it's having a spasm right now. <sighs> okay. Is it getting better or worse? No, it's worse. It's coming in waves of pain now. Ah, my gosh. It is, hold on. I'm super lightheaded. Like super lightheaded. <sighs> you need some water? <sighs> you're, you're like getting flushed. Your face is like turning red. You're getting like puffy under your eyes. I'm sweating bullets right now. Bullets, bullets of sweat for the bullet ant. Okay, I'm gonna try to stay composed. I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to cut the scene pretty quickly. I'm in a lot of pain right now. Okay, at the moment, I'm experiencing hot radiating waves of pain. It feels as if someone has stabbed me with a hot poker and I can actually feel the venom. It's throbbing. It's very similar to the bite of the Gila monster. When I was bitten by the Gila monster, it was intense pain and then it would reside and then it would return with a vengeance. This is, at this point, the tarantula hawk was already done hurting. This is getting worse. This is getting worse. I don't know if I'm going to be able to take this for 24 hours. <laughs> it pumped me full of venom. This is going to be bad. It's one thing to get tagged and, you know, to be, I got stung. It's another thing to be like, I was just hoping you got that shot mark where it was literally latched on and stinging me. Oh, I am sweating bullets right now. It is humid, but my body is on fire. It's been about 20 minutes since the sting. I look at my arm. It feels like it is on fire, about up to my shoulder. Extremely painful right in that region. It's red, it is swollen. But I feel composed enough to give you guys a proper outro. Now they say that this pain is gonna last for 24 hours. And my goodness, if it does, I'm in for one wild day. But. I think it goes without question that the bullet ant sting is the most painful that I have faced thus far on the insect sting pain index. However, as some of you may know, there are whispers that there is possibly a more painful sting out there. The warrior wasp may challenge the bullet ant's claim at the peak of the insect sting pain index. Am I going to be willing to take on that challenge? Stay tuned and we'll find out. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Woo, what a day. As we returned this legendary creature back to its colony, the insect was immediately greeted by the other ants. Like a soldier who had returned from a great battle and who would perhaps share its tale of the giant human, it had defeated with a single sting. And as I watched this fearless gladiator disappear into the darkness, from my perspective, I too felt as if I had defeated a giant. A giant ladder I challenged myself to climb that we have all come to know as the Insect Sting Pain Index. I am proud to say I made it, and that when it comes to the most painful sting in the insect kingdom, so far, it definitely belongs to the bullet ant. It has been a long 24 hours. Now, they say that the bullet ant is the 24 hour ant. My arm is still sore today. Guys, look at my arm. I think that the venom actually scarred the skin right there. I don't know if you can see it on my face. I'm exhausted. 
Barely slept at all last night because my arm was just like pulsating. I could feel these hot waves of pain going through it. I guess we'll see where it's at in 48 hours. It's still stinging now. Legends are born from the stories we are told. And as they are passed down from generation to generation, they oftentimes become so grandiose, they are nearly impossible to believe. But when it comes to the legend of Bala, trust me when I say, the tales are true. There it is, the bullet ant tree. Check out the size of their kingdom. That tree is absolutely massive. I can't believe it has been five years since I was stung by the bullet ant. And at this point, over 50 million of you have enjoyed watching me roll around on the ground in agonizing pain. And I'm sure you're wondering to yourselves, Coyote, why have you returned to this location? Are you going to be stung again? Today we are celebrating that episode, not only its entertainment, but also the education that came out of it so that you guys could learn about these fascinating insects. Now to up the ante, we have created something called the Bullet Ant Box, which is probably exactly as it sounds, a clear plastic cube that is going to be filled with stinging ants. My hand is going to go inside and we're going to see what happens. Will the bullet ant sting if not provoked? Remember, when I was stung the first time, I physically held an ant to my forearm to induce a sting. I know you guys are thinking, Coyote, we showed up for the stings. Something crazy better happen. I can guarantee you guys this much. This episode is going to be wildly entertaining. So if you guys are ready, let's get started with the bullet ant box. So why in the world do we catch 20 bullet ants and put them inside of this clear plastic container? Now the purpose is not necessarily to induce stings, it's to celebrate the education that you guys have all garnered from our original bullet ant episode. My entire arm feels like it's having a spasm right now. But today we're going to determine whether or not the bullet ant truly is an angry little creature. What I'm going to do today is gently place my hand and forearm into this box and set it down. I wanna see if the ants will just walk around on me and not get aggressive. I know what you guys are thinking, Coyote, we showed up to see some stings and some craziness, so we're really hoping you get stung 20 times, maybe more, because remember, these ants can sting more than once. Now, just in case something catastrophic does happen, we also have an epinephrine pen, just in case I go into anaphylactic shock. This Panera toxin is extremely potent, and to be honest with you, I have no idea how my body will react if I'm stung a second time. So it's always good to take safety as a precaution, and if I have to inject myself with the EpiPen, of course, that's gonna be just as entertaining as all of the stings. Yes, bullet ants bite, but it's the sting, which is armed with a paralyzing neurotoxic peptide known as panerotoxin that is responsible for putting its victim in tears. When it's injected into your bloodstream, it specifically attacks the central nervous system, causing extreme pain that is often compared to the burning sensation of a bullet wound. No reported cases of death have ever been associated with this sting, but depending on venom yield, side effects can include massive swelling, limb paralysis, hallucinations, and muscular discomfort that can last for nearly 36 hours. Yep. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the bullet ant box. Here we go. One, two, three. Right now, I am just trying my best to keep my calm. The ants are definitely crawling all over my hand. A lot of heat is likely registering off of my skin. So far, no bites, no stings. My heart is going about a million miles a second right now. Now, what I don't wanna do is shake my hand around with any sudden movements. If I do that, all I'm going to do is make the ants angry. Oh man, that is a creepy feeling, having those ants walking up and over my hand. I'm gonna try to keep my hand in there for as long as I possibly can. I'm just trying to control my heart rate at the moment. I'm trying not to move my hand. The ants are crawling around, they are investigating. 
and they have incredible sensory organs in their antennas, so they can definitely sense that this is something alien in their environment. At this point, they are most likely trying to find a way to get out of the bullet ant box. Oh, I think I'm getting bit on my wrist. Something's biting me. No sting, but I'm definitely getting nibbled at. And the thing about your hands and your wrist is that they are extremely sensitive, a lot of nerve endings. So if I do end up getting stung, it's going to be extremely painful. I'm going to gently turn my hand like this, just to give them another option, if they so choose. Nothing happening. The ants actually seem to be doing their best to avoid my hand. Now, if I took my hand and shoved it into the nest of a bullet ant, their immediate defense is going to be to defend the colony. Inside this plastic box, the ants don't necessarily feel as if they need to defend something. Okay, now one of the ants has escaped and is actually out on the table. Be careful, guys, we've got live ants amongst us. Now, you guys may recall that there is a little, sorry, so nervous at the moment, even though I'm not being stung yet. Now, one really interesting thing that I know you guys have commented on in the comments section is the bullet ant gloves, which is a very famous tradition in South America that young boys will go through to essentially transition between boyhood and manhood. And the reason that people are stung inside of those bullet ant gloves is because the ants are actually woven into the palm leaves. Those ants, once they wake up, they realize that they're trapped and they begin to sting. Those stings then become the hallucination that these young boys go through and eventually the spiritual journey to transition between boyhood and manhood. At the moment, these ants are not being pressed into my skin. I actually have an ant right here walking up on the table, kind of getting surrounded by them. And I am not being stung because the ants are not feeling restrained. A couple of them are escaping, that is completely fine. They will just find their way back up into the forest and eventually back to the colony. And I think what we've ultimately proven at this point is that while the bullet ant may be intimidating, if you are not threatening them, if you're not pressing them down on your skin or attacking their home, they have absolutely no reason to bite, let alone sting you. I gotta say, I'm truly thankful for all that the bullet ants have given us thus far. I don't think we could have performed a better experiment to celebrate the five-year anniversary of Stung by a Bullet Ant. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. I know you were all hoping for an onslaught of vicious stings so that we could have a good laugh watching me roll around on the ground like a big baby. It's fair to admit, I was nervous at first. But I'm glad I was not stung because it helps us recognize that bullet ants are not aggressive toward humans unless provoked. If you stomp on their mound or hold one to your arm with a pair of forceps, you're going to get stung. Otherwise, they simply want to go about their peaceful existence as they forage for food in the rainforest. Brave Wilderness found a creative way to put the bullet ant in a very bright spotlight. And in turn, this little insect helped us drive forward a brand that now promotes conservation and shares education around the world. When you really sit back and think about it, it's a pretty cool story. So to you, Bullet Ant, we say thank you for being such a super cool creature.